baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6.3-6. 6, 3 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. excited about you being with us for service tomorrow and stopping by to help us with some leadership training tonight and we want to make him welcome. He is, uh, he's taking on the work of uh, building a couple of churches there uh, in and around I guess southern San Francisco. Yes. Yeah and so we want to be in prayer with him for good success and and the good results there. He's also going to be curtailing his traveling quite a bit, so we won't be able to lean on him so often, and it'll be a more rare of a treat for him to come. So absence makes the heart grow fonder. We'll be that much more fonder of you, but we'd rather have a, a working evangelist. Now we got to train new evangelists. Yes. So, but we love you, and we're so glad you're here. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big. Before we get started, I, I know that some of you have probably been here all day, so I, I am going to try to uh, condense everything I have to say. But um, I I was on uh, I was on flying over here yesterday, and um, all the Wi-Fi was shut down on all the planes. Uh, they they weren't really letting anybody communicate. And of course, when I landed, and I turned my cell phone on. I saw um, everything that was going on in Paris. And we are definitely living in some very interesting times. Yes, sir. And um, I think above and beyond anything else, we're living in times that demand a response. And uh, not just from all of humanity, but from the church. Amen. Uh, and um, I do have, uh, my mother travels to Paris several times a year. And uh, we have friends and family there. And so I do want to take some time out to pray right now for Paris. Let's pray for France. Um, because... Um, it's definitely uh, not been easy for them what they're going through. And um, we need to take this, this prayer serious because uh, ISIS on their website, in fact, they said that um, French blood was good, but they prefer American blood. And so um, we have to pray. And uh, everything you guys are doing here, I know you're running through calendars and all that, but it's a big deal what we're doing here. That's right. We're not just going through calendars and making plans and... Uh, all this is making significant differences and uh, every soul we win and every time we have revival and great service uh, I believe we're making an impact in the world that's right and so let's pray right now and let's not let's pray and ask God to touch France and let's pray and ask God to touch the United States Jesus we thank you for this opportunity to be here today God we see that our world is changing rapidly God, we're asking you right now, Lord, to extend your hand, Lord, over to France, God. We're asking you to touch the people in that country. God, we're also asking you to put your hand in protection over the United States. God, we pray that you would help us for these closing hours of time, Lord, to move, to hustle. God, to make a difference in this world. Lord, help us to take every opportunity we have, Lord, to have revival, to take it serious. God, we are asking you all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, 
Amen. 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 I have personally had the opportunity uh, to see um, my best friend for several years uh, was co uh, converted from Islam. And uh, I think one of the most touching stories I've ever heard um, was not only my friend's testimony, his mother wore the hijab, the whole thing, and it, uh, his father mysteriously traveled to Afghanistan uh, several times a year. In fact, I remember the day my friend got a phone call from the U.S. government because he was from a very unique region in Afghanistan, and they wanted to hire him for a year to go and translate as they busted down doors of Afghani people. But I think one of the most uh, unique stories I've ever heard was of um, a man who has been nicknamed the Green Prince. His real name is Mossab Hassan Yosef. And between the years of uh, nine, 1997 and 2007, he worked with uh, one of the leading uh, secret um, kind of undercover agencies of Israel. They're called the Shin Bet. And um, he, he was probably their most prized informant. And the reason was because he was the son of one of Hamas's uh, head guys. And uh, he was able to uh, help the Israeli army um, to, you know, find a lot of these sleeper cells and break them open and, and, and make them, you know, arrests and uh, etc. But he, he eventually was discovered on both ends uh, or on the Hamas end. And so he had to flee to the United States. And when he arrived to the United States, um, he was approached by Christians and uh, he, he did, in fact, convert to Christianity. But he said that he went to a church in San Diego. And uh, there in the church in San Diego, he spent several months and began to read his Bible, began to reach out to Jesus, uh, made a full-blown you know, conversion, confession over to Jesus, whatever. Um, but uh, he said that he felt one day to ask the church to pray for him. And uh, so he asked the church to pray for him. And he revealed what his prayer request was. And he said... I happen to be the son of a Hamas leader and my life's being threatened. Please pray for me. And he said, immediately these people who I thought were so nice became cold and sterile. He said, and I completely stopped going to church after that. And I'm telling you all that to say this, that I really do believe that the apostolic church is in a perfect position yes, to make an impact. Um, I have seen Muslim people come to altars because they don't feel offended by the way we dress. Um, I can take you to any denominal church here in Alabama and even in the city where I live. And the men have tank tops and tattoos. And uh, in their mind, they're no different than any other heathen or pagan walking the streets. But when they see godly women and they hear a shout about one God and dance and rejoice, it touches them. And it lets them know that, amen, there is a different kind of people in the earth. Amen. A people that are, amen, not just living in the belly of the beast. Uh, they're conquering the beast. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, I believe, you know, last night, my last flight, um, and I feel to say this, so I hope I'm going somewhere with all this. Of all the flights I could be on, I'm on the last flight to Birmingham, and uh, some Muslims with hijabs get on, you know. And I'm like, I'm going to go sit right next to them, because I don't, if, if you know, if I'm going to die, I want to be there. So... <laughs> Uh, and you know, and now everyone's looking at me because I look rather Middle Eastern. And so I'm looking at them, they're looking at me, and, and everyone feels awkward. But you know, um, I do not want this church to miss out on the fact that here in Birmingham, here in this area, you have the potential to reach out uh, to all kinds of cultures and all kinds right. of nations and all kinds of people. I believe that right here, we can make a greater impact on the even the Islamic world than any government or any army. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, I do believe, and I'm not speaking dramatically, that's not hyperbole. Uh, I really do believe that we have a gospel that makes a big difference. Amen. Amen. And uh, it, can, it, it works. Somebody say it works. It works. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17 if you have your Bibles, fine. If you don't, don't worry about it. Very familiar passage of Scripture. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things 
are become new. Um, there was a time in world history when everybody was entirely pagan. Uh, and virtually every society practiced human sacrifice. Uh, and in particular, uh, just about every civilization also practiced the sacrificing of children. Um, humanity, by identifying their gods with nature and its cyclical effects, uh, isolated itself from the belief of substantive progress or the idea that we could experience genuine change. Amen. In many cultures, the idea that anything could break out of the forces of nature and out of fate, amen, was not only unfathomable, uh, in some cases it was inconceivable. And uh, not even philosophers like Aristotle could rise above the concept of human life as being tied to a wheel, revolving in its own fixed orbit and coming back to its original starting point of darkness and chaos. Because humanity was such a prisoner to fate, most early civilizations saw little or no reason to deal kindly with their fellow man. Practically all forms of exploitation were not only permissible, and most civilizations they were deemed prudent. It is to this very abyss of resignation and darkness that God begins to speak, amen, a very radical idea and a lofty vision of human destiny. The recipients of God's word uh, received a new view on life, one that not only moved forward rather than in circles, but one that was full of meaning. Early on, God combats the idea that humanity can rise above its social and environmental circumstances. Even more precisely, God slams the idea that a bad past and a bad future are inseparable. Amen. Very quickly, I just want to run down uh, a few people that we all know in the Bible that defied, amen, their social circumstances and even def uh, defied, amen, their, in some cases, uh, their natural circumstances. I think about people like Noah. The Bible is very clear to let us know that he was righteous in his generation. Amen. Everybody around Noah was doing bad. And yet Noah, amen, among this whole world, amen, that was uh, going down, downward, Noah was able to rise above all the sin. I think about people like Abraham, who was told by God to leave his, uh, his kin, his country, and his father's house. These, of course, all represent the three aspects that shape human identity and core values. And God says, I want you to come out of that. Amen. And it would have been easy for Abraham to go out and follow God and collapse and, and become a failure and perhaps even just end up being like his fathers and his father's fathers. But Abraham, with a word from God and a promise from God, rose above all those circumstances. I think about people like Joseph, who was taken out from his family's house and then put in Egypt. Amen. And uh, yet he was able to tell Potiphar, amen, uh, Potiphar's wife, if you and I got in, uh, involved right now, that would be a sin against God. Amen. And a sin against your husband. He was able to retain the things God had given him and he was able to overcome. Amen. Not only Egyptian culture. Amen. But he was able to overcome his own passions. I think about the people of Israel who were enslaved for 450 years and God could have easily gave up on them and said, you know, these people, they have a slave mentality. They'll always be slaves. Uh, this maybe I should just scratch them off and start off with the new people. But God said, no, I believe that I can raise them above these standards. I believe that there is hope for change. I believe that man can break cycles and move forward. And in case you're wondering right now what I'm talking about or why I'm talking about this is because I believe that everything we do, amen, and every effort we put forth into, uh, into our church and into our programs and into our Sunday schools and whatever it is that we're doing, I believe we should do it with the conviction that, you know what, we have a life-changing message, amen. amen, and that we can offer hope to people amen. because outside of the gospel and outside of the power of Jesus Christ, people are fated. People are subject to just yeah, repeat right. the life of their relatives. They're, they are subject to do whatever the economy does. They're subject to all kinds of powers and forces. But what we have here, it breaks chains. It shatters those forces. It shatters social and economic circumstances. Amen? Somebody say amen. Uh, there, but God rose up Israel. God rose up judges. Amen? And I think uh, when you read the book of Judges, and I won't go through it all, but... 
When you, when you read the book of Judges, you see these examples of God using people who should not have been used. I think of people like Jephthah. Amen. Jephthah was the son of a prostitute. Amen. And here Israel is in the throes of war and the throes of turmoil and trouble. And they're thinking, you know, who could help us? Maybe God's got some good guy who comes out of a good family, maybe a military background. And God says, no, I got a kid. Amen. Who, who has a prostitute mother. Amen. And that's who I'm going to use. He's going to, he's going to raise up. Amen. And, and, and deliver you. Amen. And they had a hard time receiving that. Uh, God said, you know what? No, I won't stop with Jephthah. I'll use a woman named Deborah to get you guys out of trouble. Amen. While, while society at large was saying women were worthless, God says, no, I can use a woman. Amen. To deliver a whole society, to deliver a whole people. Somebody shout amen. amen. We can talk about kings, people like David and prophets. Amen. That really don't have good backgrounds. They, they, they should have been... Uh, Subject to not only, amen, uh, a bad future, but just a dismal life, but with God in their life, amen, they were able to overcome all kinds of circumstances and all kinds of uh, uh, supposed uh, outcomes that should have happened in their life. They, they had victory with God on their side. That's, that's essentially what we're offering people, amen. We, we are offering them a walk with God, the God who defies, amen, circumstances, the God who breaks Cycles, the God who can give them a, a means out and escape. Somebody say amen. amen. God's vision of a redeemable humanity becomes a reality in the incarnation. Amen. The life and ministry of Jesus Christ, along with the day of Pentecost, enforce the notion that people can become new. Jeremiah 31 and 33 says, I will put my law in their inward parts and right in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Ezekiel 36 and 26 says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. Leadership should not only think in terms of contribution, but in terms of conviction as well. We labor both with our hands and our hearts. We look to be involved because we realize that what we do is the only real hope that people have. I, when I came to God, um, my future was pretty mapped out for me, and it didn't look good. And I'm so thankful for a church that took the time out to determine who should clean, who should vacuum, who should, uh, who should preach, who should sing. Uh, I'm so glad for a church that got together once a year to have leadership meetings, to plan special services, because I came to God on a special service. I came to God on, 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 on planning. Amen. What we are doing here, these, these meetings and and, and organizing ourselves and, and making plans. You know, all those things ultimately, they, they, they facilitate, they provide a means for people to come into our church and experience the life-changing power of God. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I really felt to, I prayed a few days ago and I prayed again today and I, I, I just really felt to encourage uh, a few people here. Uh, some of you might have more contact with people than others. Uh, sometimes, you know, some of us work behind the scenes, others have direct contact, whether it's a Sunday school class, uh, whether it's youth ministry, uh, or even the church. Don't ever lose hope in God's ability to change people. Um, I, I, I don't mind saying this, you know, because it's to my own shame, but uh, I, I've been talking to Pastor Sutton regularly, or periodically, and I even had the opportunity to see him, uh, to see him in California just a few uh, weeks ago. But um, he, he asked me how the church was going. I said, you know, it's going pretty good. I have, I have people coming, and uh, we've had some really, some really neat growth. And I said, you know, it's kind of odd. You know I, 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 you know, I can sometimes tell who's going to stick around and who's not. And I appreciate Pastor Sutton saying, well, I can never figure it out. <laughs> he said, because there's a lot of people that I thought would never stick, and they're faithful uh, Happy saints of God today, you know. And then there's those other people you think are going to make it, and they don't make it, you know. And um, But I'm so thankful that, that you're already in a culture, in an environment, where we do believe that you just never know. You just never know who's going to come out, uh, who's going to flourish, who's going to be, who's gonna be uh, awesome in God. And so we ought to labor with that. We ought to plan with that in mind. Uh, we ought to show up to everything enthusiastic. Uh, you it's so easy to, you know, especially with kids. And I, um, 
you know, you work with kids and you think, man, I don't know if this is even working. This, uh, this kid is going nuts. Uh, he's beating up other kids. Uh, he just, you know, chewed on this other girl's arm. Not good. You know. Uh, you know, and then you just have these moments where that kid gets into a service and the Holy Ghost hits that kid. And all of a sudden, this kid who comes from this horrid background is now making huge leaps and improvements. Stuff that medication couldn't do. Stuff that the therapist couldn't do. Stuff that social uh, programs couldn't do. All of a sudden, a Sunday school teacher with a lesson and a little bit of patience for a kid who gnaws on other kids. Amen. Is, is making a huge difference. Somebody shout amen. 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 And I see a few young faces here. And, uh, in the youth group, as you're working with the youth or college and career, amen, create a culture that says, you know what, we believe that God can change your life. We don't, we don't accept what society is putting on you. We don't accept even what your chemistry is putting on you. Amen. We believe that Christ is greater than your chemistry. We believe that Christ can give you a character that's greater than your chemistry. Amen. We don't accept, we don't accept, amen, racial um, uh, uh, in limitations. Hallelujah. Uh, that, that get on people. You know, it's, 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 it's so easy to believe that. And, and you know, I, I, I hope I don't get in trouble for what I'm about to say here. I, this, this will probably be kind of, I hope this comes out right. Um, I'm in several situations where, um, I, I'm just going to be very candid with where I'm at right now, myself personally. Uh, I, I, I've not always traveled out south, uh, I live in California, which is as diverse as it comes. Um, I, for my church building, uh, I can walk to Chinatown and literally be surrounded by, uh, you know, almost half a million Chinese people. And I mean, in Chinatown where I live, there, there's just, just nothing's in English. And even the crosswalks, they're like in X's because Chinese people like walking through the middle of the street. And, and, uh, and as, as I'm walking through Chinatown, there's like Hispanics you know, buying bok choy and there's like Muslim people and it's just very diverse. And I, you know, and uh, I am like the darkest guy in the room. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I feel prejudice rise up in me. And, and not so much in, in a, in a, in a antagonistic way, but I have all these like feelings and, and I wonder, you know, do they like me? And, 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 how do they really feel about my race and my, you know, and, and I remember not too long ago, God dealing with me and saying, you know, you, you, you have to learn not to be prejudiced too. You have to be open. You know, it's okay that you are the darkest guy in here. These people love you. They don't have anything against you. Don't, don't let your suspicions get the best of you. Amen. Don't let your own prejudice get the best of you. And uh, I believe that we're living in a day where everybody has got to peel off the prejudice. Everybody. Whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, whatever you are, you got to be open. Like you got to realize, you know what? There's a bigger picture here. This is a global thing. He is the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Um, I was even thinking about today. You know, when Joseph stocked up the corn, Amen, to to save his family. Um, he wasn't just trying to save his family. He he sold corn to everybody. He didn't pick and choose who he would sell corn to. He didn't say, you know, you're not you're not Egyptian or you're not Jewish. You're, you're Bye, you know, hope, hope you make it. No, he sold corn to everybody. You ought to sell corn to everybody. Amen. Right. You, ought to, you ought to give this gospel to everybody. Amen. I, um, I, I'm almost done because I know some of you are probably ready to go to sleep and we got church tomorrow morning. But I, I leaned over to uh, Pastor Sutton. He was in San Jose, California. And I'll tell you what, you've never seen a more diverse church than Brother Shoemakes. I mean, it's Filipino and Fijians and... Uh, uh, I mean, everything you can possibly imagine under the sun. I think Brother Shoemaker and his family and uh, a few of those extensions there, they're, they're, they're like the only, you know, non, uh, they're like the only white people there. I mean, they're very outnumbered. And, um, and I, told, I told Brother Sutton, I said, Brother Sutton, I said, I'm going to be very honest with you. I said, in all my travels, I said, you know, you guys here in Birmingham have developed probably what I deem one of the most culturally diverse churches in Pentecost, and um, and and that's a good thing, Amen. and that's especially considering where you're at. And you should you don't let anything get in the way. I I believe that there are. As I was talking earlier uh, when I began this, even 
I want to try to at least help you to, to spark a burden. To say, you know what, God, we want everything in here. Amen. Uh, we God sent us some Muslims. Amen. Amen. Oh, they got, got, got kind of quiet. Amen. I got to do it. But, uh, but, but God, sent, God sent us some Muslims. God, God sent us, man, God sent us some Baptists. Amen. Amen. But God, God, God sent us everything, you know? Like, let, these, let, these, let this house, amen, uh, let this house reflect, amen, uh, your glory, amen. Let, it, let, let this place be full of humans, emphasis on few, amen, different colors, amen. Let, 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 let this place be filled, amen. And God, let this place be filled with your power. Amen. And help us all to believe that everything we're doing and every time we get together and every service and every Sunday school class and every driving of a bus and every cleaning of a building, that it's all going Amen. towards those new creatures, making yeah. new creatures with new cultures, That's with right. new frames of uh, new points of reference, new That's coordinates, right. new lives, new hearts, new spirits, yeah. full of meaning. Full of significance. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's all raise our hands and let's ask God. Amen. For a mighty revival. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We're almost Hallelujah. closing out the year. Amen. We got 2016 ahead of us. I believe there's a mighty revival ahead of us. Jesus. Oh Jesus, I'm asking you right now, God, to open up our minds and our hearts and our souls. God, hallelujah, to receive a mighty revival. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that in the months and the weeks to come, God, you would begin to draw souls, God. And as you're drawing souls in, God, don't ever let us, God, fail to believe, Lord, that you're able to convert, oh God, and to create new creatures in you. God, we believe that you're mighty. We believe that your spirit can. God, we're asking you, oh Lord, to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a spirit of revival, God. calendar date is um, is a bundle of potentiality yeah a uh, little Sunday school kid or a bus kid I love it we've got some young ladies coming on the bus now and they've got this little thing they've been doing for like three Sundays in a row they kind of they get ready they're all charged up they're ready and they go down to the altar they pick their spot and they get set and they lift their hands and they look at one another and they get and we pray them through every Sunday morning <laughs> gathers up but they're they're into that and it's like it's like we are reaching into places where hell just thinks it has a lot yeah and we've got a fledgling school here now we've got kids that uh, that are um, coming out of a, uh, an environment where if they continue in a public s uh, setting they will have no hope at all but we have a we have an opportunity to touch them and so all of these different ministries, all of these diverse uh, means by which we're reaching, we're, we're working in the house, we're being a blessing to the people of God, we're being effective in the harvest place. And uh, all of these dates that we're setting, they are dates with destiny, they are dates where there is this flashpoint of potential. We're not there yet, but we're looking down and we're saying, we're going to be there and God's going to be there. The place is going to be prepped with prayer and our lives are going to be prepped with, with spiritual and informational preparation. And we're going to have a convergence there at that calendar date. And who knows what will happen there, who will be stirred or what life will yeah. be changed. And I really, I really do. I really do believe that uh, we're, we're, uh, in a place, I just feel 
I, I can't, I don't have words for this, but there's this undergirding hum, this thing that's here, a strength, a kind of an organic uh, uh, presence and pulse that I expect to produce fruit. I really, really do. And I, I don't know how to, uh, to, to express that to you. I feel it in every service. I feel it every time I engage God in prayer about this place. I'm more excited about this than I was in 1987. And uh, it, it is just, uh, it's just a wonderful thing to be involved. I appreciate every one of you. I really do. And uh, so don't forget the business that we're in. We're in God's business. So make sure you keep your circles in, in proper order and that you fill yourself full of the Holy Ghost on a, on a regular basis. Keep your prayer life tethered and all. Because I think one of the most devastatingly disappointing things that could possibly happen to us is that we would set a date and God would say, I'm going to be there. And we wouldn't be there or we would be there and yeah. unprepared for that moment. So every one of these dates that we set, every event that we schedule, every meeting that we plan to come together in, let's bathe the thing in prayer. Let's look forward to it in a, as a moment where it's just something critical in the Holy Ghost can happen here. I really do believe that. And it feels like hyperbole, you know, when we're talking about these things. But our world's coming apart. It is. We're light and salt. We're, we're, we're a place where people can come and be saved from all this nonsense and live forever with God. God bless you. I appreciate you. Appreciate a good word in the house to, today, Brother Prado. We're looking forward. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.